This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Hi, this is the third lecture on variance analysis, and we're nearly there. We do need to do a bit more. Uh, if you look back to how I started in the first lecture, I set up the original fixed budget, we flexed it, we compared with the actual, and we got the variances. But I also said that what management are going to be keen on knowing, they originally budgeted on a profit of 45,500. They'll want to know why the actual profit was different. And I did say in the first lecture that the most obvious reason is that we sold more units. And selling more units, that alone would have given us more profit. It would have given us 54,300. And why didn't we make 54,300? Well, partly because of those cost variances, which we've just been looking at, but also the sales. That uh, the flex, the actual, are both based on selling 8,400, but we must have sold at a lower price. Well, although they should be pretty obvious, having done that table that we did, I said several times, you will not be asked to produce all of that in the exam. But you could be asked, just given the question, or part of the question, as it stood on the first page, you could be asked to work out the sales variances. And so let's have a look now at the sales variances. And from the original budget, the original fixed budget, two things change in respect of sales. One is that if you sell more or less than you budgeted, you'll expect to make more or less profit. The second is that, of course, if you charge, if the selling price is more or less than budgeted, then again, you'll make more or less profit. And so let's look at the two separately. First of all, let's look at the effect of selling more or less than we budgeted. That's known as the sales volume variance. And to check here, we compare how many units we actually sell with how many units we budgeted on selling. Well, how many units did we sell? We sold 8,400. How many units had we budgeted on selling? 8,000. And so here, we sold 400 more units than we budgeted. Now, if everything else had gone perfectly, how much extra profit would that have given us? Now, remember, we're doing marginal costing. And so, selling 400 unit, extra units should have, the extra profit will be the standard contribution per unit. And if everything else had gone perfectly, each unit should have sold for $75. Each unit had a standard cost of $53. Every unit should have given us $22. And so selling 400 extra units, that, if again, if everything else had gone perfectly, that would have given us an extra 8,800 profit. I'm not going to wind back, but look back if you need at the, um, what I did in the first lecture when I set up the profits tables. I actually mentioned that at the time. But if everything else had gone perfectly, if the selling price had been correct, if the costs had all been correct, that would have been the extra profit. Now, of course, everything else didn't go perfectly. The costs, we paid more, we paid less, we dealt with them. 
But the other thing that didn't go perfectly is the selling price. Let's check sales price variance. We should have sold at 75 a unit. If we sell at more or less than 75, we make more or less profit. Let's check. All I care about is did we sell at the right price or not? We take our actual sales at actual selling price We compare with what we should have sold them at, actual sales at standard selling price. Back to the question, how many did we actually sell? We actually sold 8,400 units. How much did we sell them for? Well, they've actually told us the total revenue, so we can write straight down 613,200. How much should we have sold them for? Those 8,400 should have been sold at 75 a unit. 630. And so I think clearly we've been selling them at a lower price. We've lost revenue of the difference of 16,800. And if everything else went perfect, you know, all the costs and everything, but surely a dollar less uh, revenue means a dollar less profit. It's an adverse variance. All right, now we're, uh, well, we've done example three with sales variances. Let's virtually finally, let's produce an operating statement. Again, I referred to this in the um, lectures on the previous chapter. But let's prepare a statement explaining to management why the actual profit is different from the budgeted profit. Now, you never have to prepare this statement, but you are expected to understand what it is. And it won't take me a minute to do. We've done all the workings. So there'll be a little bit of up and down, I'm afraid, here, but our operating statement We always start this statement with the original budget profit The original budget profit was Oh, sorry. 45,500. Oh, I've forgotten it by the time I get now. 45,500. And we want to list all the reasons why the profit ended up more or less, and hopefully explain how we get to the actual profit. The first thing, of course, is sales. Let's look at sales. We've just calculated there's a sales volume variance. And I can remember that it was 8,800 favourable. We sold more, that on its own would have given us more profit. However, there's also a sales price variance. Again, I think I can remember it, 16,800, yes, 16,800 adverse. We dropped the price, that would have given us less profit. So at that stage, we'd be expecting a profit of thirty-seven five hundred. Why didn't we get 37,500? Well, because of all the cost variances. We calculated them all in the last lecture, so let's list them. And here, what we tend to do for neatness is show two little columns, favourable, adverse. 
You'll see what I mean, but just let's list them. Materials. We had an expenditure variance and a usage variance. I think expenditure was, I better check, 3867 adverse. Oops, it's easier for you. Hopefully you've got it in front of you. Yeah, 3867 adverse, the usage 612 favourable. Uh, Labour. With a rate of pay variance, an idle time variance, and an efficiency variance. Now, idle time, uh, I can remember it was 6,500 adverse. Efficiency, uh, 2,000. It was 2,000 favourable. I think rate of pay was 2,485 favourable. Again, forgive me. Yeah, 2485 favourable, 65 out of those 2000 favourable. Uh, variable overheads. Uh, an expenditure variance, 852 favourable. An efficiency variance, 800 favourable. Finally, of course, there is one more variance which I haven't shown working so and I don't really need to. But of course, to get to the final profit, one other thing would affect us, and that's fixed overheads. Fixed overheads, we budgeted on 130,500. Well, I hope, obviously, if fixed overheads are more or less than we expected, again, it would affect the profit. So an easy one here, the fixed overhead expenditure variance. I didn't show workings, I, mean, I don't need, well, I'll show them here. I'm not going to write down a rule, I'm sure this is obvious. What did you actually spend? From the question 134074. How much should we have spent? Again, from the question 130,500. So it's as easy as that, the difference between the actual and the budget. We overspent by 3574, so it's adverse. So there is everything that went wrong, for want of a better word. Uh, let's uh, add them up and finish it. Uh, favourable, 612 plus 2485, 800. I get the total favourables to be 6749. I get the total adverses. To be 12941. And so the net result. 12941 minus 6749. I get a net adverse of 6192. So what happens to the profit? The profit we had got 37,500 minus 6192, total of the cost variances. I end up with 31,308, which should be the actual profit. Uh, and because of what I did in the first lecture here, I can check it. Was that the actual profit? Oh, last time I'll go up and down. No, it wasn't. It should be 30,308. Let me check my addition. Oh, how embarrassing. 45,500 plus 8,800 minus 16,800. So that's right. Uh, 37,500 minus 6192. I must have added up one of these columns wrong. 3, 9, sorry. 3, 8, 3, 8, 6, 7 plus 6500 plus 3, 5, 7, 4.
That should be 13,941. Therefore, this was 7,192. And there we are. So I am sorry. How embarrassing having everything else perfectly listed. However, uh, uh, again, you won't be asked to produce an operating statement, but there can be questions checking you know what it is. Is the statement listing the variances explaining why the actual profit is different from the original budget profit? All right, there is one last thing. No more numbers, though. But it's paragraph six, example five. The interpretation of variances. So no more numbers, but you can be asked questions to check you understand the relevance, the importance of them. You see, we've done all those variances, we know what went wrong, and management will want to investigate. You see, normally this is done monthly. And if we find at the end of uh, January, ooh, materials expenditure adverse, we've always spent 3867, we'll want to know why. Because if something's gone wrong in January, maybe, hopefully, we can correct the problem and perhaps not overspend in February and March and so on. So we go to all the managers in turn and we'll say, well, why did you overspend 3867? What was the reason? Uh, why was there so much idle time? Even the favourable ones, you'll say, how did you manage to save 612? You know, are, are we going to carry on saving it or was it just an accident this month? And so it's not just in real life getting the figures, it's then finding out why. And just to have a little bit of thought, can you, before I record, or before you play the next lecture, the final lecture on this, can you have a think? Example 5 says, in the previous example, there was a materials price variance. There we are, 3867. I don't know why it happened. There are lots of possible reasons that that could have occurred. Have a go, please, just for a few minutes. Note on a bit of paper somewhere any reasons you can think as to why we may have overspent on materials. There are several reasons. One or two are actually very obvious. One or two is less obvious, but why might that have happened? See how many reasons you can think of. All right, so I'll stop this one here. The next lecture, we'll discuss reasons. <laughs>